Hello everyone, peace of Christ to all. In this video, we will answer one more lies made by Muslims as usually. However, this time is made by Shabir Ali. No, Shabir Ali, I have a story with him and uh, I want to remind him that he promised he will debate me after he finished his PhD. Uh, maybe he was thinking that his PhD will make him a scholar, but obviously this man never changed. You know, Shabir Ali, when they offer him an ABN TV to debate me, he accepts and then he escapes from the debate and the excuse as the PhD. And he bought my book, and my book name is The Deception of Allah, but yet Shabir Ali he could not refute one thing about my book. And today's video is about debating about the deception of Allah. He bought my book, he could not refute anything, and he will never refute anything because simply he cannot. But Shabir Ali is the kind who, if you ask him a question, he never answer. He will give you an answer of somebody else. This is what always he do. And I will give you some example. Here Shabir Ali is debating Anish Sharush. And Sharush, he quote for him endless number of verses from the Quran, showing him his prophet, saying clearly that Allah is the God of deception. So what Shabir Ali do? He do not need to answer. He quote for him a, ver a, 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 a pages from a book made by someone he hated Christianity. And he said this guy claimed the following. He didn't even quote one verse. He just say, listen carefully. I will mock Irene and he's all of this, uh, you know, can we respect the character of Allah as depicted in the Quran? Uh, I, I didn't expect that the debate would come to this uh, level, but uh, since he has introduced this, I have with me here the encyclopedia of... See, he was not expecting the debate to, to come to this topic, but he have a book is coming with him. It sounds like he carried those books. He, he carried the library with him. And not only this, the book have a page inside and he have a, uh, like a piece of paper inside cut it exactly where he want to read it from since he has introduced this i have with me here he, he's, he's not prepared he is not prepared that the debate would come to this uh, he didn't expect it's a surprise for him that's why he have the book with him and he is coming with the book he carried this book everywhere he go you see shabir ali try to be a better liar next time you are not a professional like your like your prophet. All of this, uh, you know, See it? The See the pages, the, the paper he's taking off. He's taking it out of the book because simply he is not expecting the debate to to go there. It's not expecting, but he have a book which is more than six hundred pages under his arm, and he carry this book everywhere he go. We know it doesn't matter where he go. Now what is this book? It's not even the Bible. He's not even to quote a verse from the Bible. No, he is going to show you what a man he said about us. What a man he said about the God of the Bible. Who care? Of Allah is depicted in the Quran. Uh, I, I didn't expect that the debate would come to this yeah, I didn't level, expect. but uh, since he has introduced this, I have with me here the Encyclopedia of Biblical Errancy by C. Dennis McKinsey. And on page one hundred. Please, next time you see Mr. McKinsey, say hi to him. Have you ever heard of any uh, Christians follow an atheist guy or whatever guy? His name is McKinsey. You are going to refute what he said to you all from one page in McKinsey without even quoting a verse from the Bible. Listen carefully. In uh, he writes, first by way of summary, because later he'll give all of the biblical references. Uh, later he will give all the biblical reference. You see, if somebody wanna try to give interpretation for the Bible the way he wants, this is his business. This is not what we do when we speak to Muslims. In order to prove a point, you have to ask those who believe in that point what they believe, and then from their belief, you debate them. Not from the belief of someone is not a Christian. I can take any verse from your book, and I can say, I can claim it says that when it does not. And that will not make me valid person because this is not what you believe. As an example, if I say to the Christians, the Muslim, they believe in the Holy Spirit to be the, 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 the third uh, uh, person of God. You will say to me, this is false. That's not what we believe, right? But I can say that. So you are doing the same. You are coming with interpretation of someone. He is no Christian. He has nothing to do with Christianity. He is not a prophet. He is not Luke or Mark or Apostle uh, 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 Paul. He is no one. So why you are quoting for us what someone he hated Christianity is saying? 
If you want to give us a proof, give us a proof from Christians. Christians believe, not someone else believe. When we speak about Islam, when we speak about, the, uh, like in my book, in the Deception of Allah book, you will not find one verse I give and the interpretation is coming from my own. Never, never, never. I show what the Muslims give as an interpretation. As an example, I've, and even the Muslims, they accuse me that I'm giving false translation. Yet, do they dare to say the Muslim translation is false? When, when the Quran chapter 4 verse 14 and many verses say clearly that Allah is the one who mislead. A Muslim, he might say to me, oh, the verse, yes, it says mislead, but you got, you, 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 you misunderstood. Then what we do, we go to the Islamic interpretation for the verse. And we see, we see what the Muslims interpretation is saying. If the Muslim interpretation is saying, yes, Allah mislead, it's mean Allah mislead. I'm not going to go to say to the Muslim, Mr. McKenzie, he said Allah, he, he mislead. That is deception. I go by what Muslims believe and Muslim scholars, not Shabir Ali. Those potatoes who live in the West, who they try to present Islam to the Western in English language, they never tell the truth. You want to hear the truth, really, go and speak to those who speak Arabic. They say it to you clearly, not those who speak English. Those who speak English, they know in purpose. If they say the truth, the truth is, 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 is bad, is ugly. But those who speak Arabic, they know they cannot hide it because everybody speaks Arabic around them. So they can't hide it. For me, obviously, it says the word yudil. And yudil in Arabic means mislead. So a Muslim who speaks Arabic, he cannot lie to me because I speak Arabic like him. However, if I want to give interpretation for this verse, what I will do? I will go to Ibn Kathir, I will go to Al Jalalain, I will go to Al Qurtubi, I will go, etc. And we see what those scholars are saying. And then whatever they are saying, we will take it. If we go as an example to Ibn Kathir, what Ibn Kathir is saying? Then Allah must lead whom He wills and guide who He wills. This is the Muslim translation of Ibn Kathir. This is the book of Ibn Kathir. This is the biggest. This is not Shabir Ali, the little, little Shabir Ali. Huh? This is not a guy who do not know Arabic. This is not a guy coming from Pakistan trying to make business. This is Ibn Kathir, one of the highest authority to, inter to give interpretation for the Quran. His book is, is one of the main source of interpretation of the Quran in all Islamic Sunni books or, or, or universities. So when Ibn Kathir, he says, yes, Allah do mislead, who are you to say Sharush is wrong? Sharush is not quoting his own, he's quoting your scholars. This is how we refute the liars. We don't go and say Mr. McKenzie. We say Mr. Ibn Kathir, which is his, your scholar and your master. McKenzie is not my scholar, he's not even Christian. So the deception of Muslims is endless. In different, uh, you know, and always, by the way, Shabir Ali, he always do the same. He never answer any question. Once they ask him, how old Aisha is? How old? Embarrassing, uh, embarrassing question. But Shabir Ali, as usual, he never answer. He will say to you, uh, there is some, some people, they say that uh, Mary, she was 12 years old when she married from Joseph. This is one of the for most funny, stupid answers ever you can imagine. Because as long as the Muslim believe that Mary, she was a virgin when she gave birth to Jesus, that means at that time she was already a woman because a child cannot have kids. This is number one. Number two, she was a virgin, you idiot. What are you talking about, Joseph? She is a virgin. According to Islam, Mary, she never get married from Joseph and Joseph is not even exist in Islam. So he is a hypocrite to the point he is saying to you that Mary, she was married to Joseph when is Islam do not believe in Joseph at all. Joseph is not exist in Islam. And I challenge him to show me Joseph in his book. Does that mean you believe in Joseph, but you don't believe in the, in, in, in the Quran? Because Quran says clearly, there is no Joseph. Mary is a virgin and she gave birth to Jesus. She was a virgin and never mentioned that Mary, she get married to anyone. So what those people, they are willing to do, they are willing to sacrifice their belief in order of deception. Like, I'm not going, okay, now you know what? I'm going to talk about the age of Mary, how she married to Joseph. And he have no proof, he have no reference. What, you will bring me Mr. McKenzie? Or you will bring me someone, he's from, uh, someone, he is a, a priest saying that? You know, we don't go by a priest. We don't go by McKenzie. We, go, go, we don't go even by me. We go by the Bible. 
For you, you have to go by the Hadith and by the Quran, and then by the scholars who are approved by all Muslims. So he said that Aisha, when she got married, she was what? How old she was? Let us see. Some other researchers have given some other. Some other researchers. You see, he have no answer. Never his answer. And the reason he say that because he don't want to be blamed for lying. He says some researcher says some researcher. What about you? Aren't you a PhD guy? How come you don't have? How come you never have your research? Variant dates uh, such as this as well. So. Some researchers said what? Let me play again the age. I did not hear the age. What was the age of Aisha when she got married? There was some mistake in the dates and it seems that Aisha might have been 16 at the time when she got Oh, there's a mistake in the date. Mistake. You see the hadith, the hadith says that Aisha, she was six years old. How the mistake happened? And the one who mentioned that is Aisha. Aisha, she was a stupid to the point she didn't remember what the age she'd get married from Muhammad. And not only that, the hadith even stating for how long Aisha she lived with Muhammad. It says she lived for nine years. However, we don't do what Muslims do. I'm not going to give interpretation for this hadith by my own, even though it's so clear and so obvious that Shabir Ali is a liar trying to defend his prophet, child molester. If we go to the Islamic official website, this is a fatwa website, Sunni fatwa. It's called Markazul Fatwa Islam Web.net. And this is the fatwa number. And this is the number in front of you, 34515. And this is the date. And here it says the question, what was the age of the lady Aisha when the Prophet he passed away? The answer, فَقَدْ كَانَ عُمْرُ أُمُّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ عَائِشَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهَا عِنْدَ وَفَاتِ النَّبِيِّ صلى الله عليه وسلم ثمانية عشرة سنة. When the, the, uh, when the mother of the believers, the Prophet died, her age was 18 years old. But he just told us that she was 19 when she married. Aisha, she married Muhammad one year after his death. That's amazing. And if you don't believe me, this is what it says. I'm going to take the text as it is to Google translation, life in the front of your eyes. We quote, we post, we paste. And we choose English and him bingo read with me it says it clearly that when he died she was about 18 years old so simply it's a fabricated answer it's a deception answer because Muslims cannot tell the truth now we go back to the topic that Allah is the one who caused people to do sin and to 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 do uh, to be in deception to prove that, I'm not going to quote McKinsey, I'm not going to quote Jack Kinsey, I'm not going even to quote Shabir Ali, I'm going to quote Muhammad. In Sahih Muslim, and this is very authentic hadith, Muhammad he said, if you were not commit sin, Allah would have swept you out of existence and would have replaced you by another people who have committed sin and then asking for forgiveness from Allah. So the whole purpose of Allah to create Muslims, he want to have fun. If you don't commit sin, Allah will replace you. You are boring. Allah wants you to commit sin. He forced you to commit sin. And if you don't commit sin, Allah will exchange you with someone better than you. The one who is better than you who is the one who will do more sin. So obviously, Allah is a sick God. He is enjoying playing with you Muslims and you have to do sin in order to make him happy. Otherwise, he will replace you. He will get better goats, a goats who fight a lot, who kill a lot. Same time, if we go to different hadith, we will see the following, that Adam and Moses, they argue each other about who is the one who turned them out of paradise. And Moses says to Adam, aren't you the one who turned us out of paradise? Adam, he said to him, isn't it written for me? Isn't it written for me, in my destiny, in my fate? Do you blame me for an action which had written by Allah in my fate 40 years before my creation? So Adam uh, uh, won the argument against Moses and overcome Moses. So according to Islam, it is the sin of Adam is not his fault. It is the fault of Allah. Allah written the sin of Adam 40 years of before his existence. So don't lie again and say Islam, don't force sin on people and Allah is not the one who caused sin. Your God is sick God and the proof in front of you. You've been served. Thank you. God bless.